Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Friday, May 11th, 2018. Uh, this is a quick market wrap, pretty much more the same if you watched yesterday's video or any of my analysis. Not a whole lot has changed. Here's the SPY. We'll start out. I'm just going to focus on the 60-minute chart since, again, uh, nothing much has changed since yesterday. So here's the 60-minute charts of SPY. We're at, you can see here, uh, there's the gap right there. We have this gap back from uh, March, uh, and then we had a reaction there. And of course, you know, other reactions along the way. So that 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 helps to validate this as a significant level. And, uh, you know, the SPY, you can just make out to the left of the chart. is still well off its highs, but QQQ is getting a little bit closer. So that that's it. That, those are the facts. And, uh, you know, the things that stand out again, uh, the fact that we're, this is one of the most overbought readings that we've had. At least it is the most overbought other than this one right here. Uh, in the last two months. So, you know, the facts are the facts. It, you know, you can look at this glass half empty or glass half full. If, if you believe the market's going to new highs, then what we're going to see here, I think at best, is a little bit of consolidation, a pullback, uh, work off these overbought conditions, and then maybe power back up. Um, you know, if let's say I were to be bullish, here's, here's the areas I'd look to buy on a pullback. Uh, these are support levels, 271, 21 and then 269.76. Um, but if you're a believer that you know we're still in this trading range, nothing's changed technically from the bigger picture. And uh, you know if, if we've had a clear pattern of wash, rinse, repeat, we've had what I call these micro trends. Again, I've gone over those. I don't want to do all the arrows right now because I've showed this many times. So if this is just the latest uh, you know micro rally within this larger trading range. Uh, and now we're poised for the next leg down. This offers one of the best shorting ops that we've seen, um, well, at least going back to this point in time right here. And that was, you know, you know, a decent shorting up again for a for an active trend trader. Uh, you know, if you're trading, when I say active trend trader, you know, for a few days, a couple weeks, that's where these trends have lasted. They've lasted all about one to three weeks uh, on average or so. Also, keep in mind before I leave this chart, I just want to mention, you know, the one of the scenarios that I laid out at the time. We, you know, I did point out when we were flagging here that we had this flagging type action, and to take the uh, measurement of a bull flag here, I'll do it with the trend line. You take the flagpole, which is a move leading up to the flag, and then simply just drag that trend line. And that gives you the measure target. So you can see we're very close. If we make a full backfill of that gap, we will have hit the measure target. Now keep in mind, measure targets are approximations. Um, you know, if you try to trade off them to the penny, you know, sometimes you're going to hit it. Sometimes it'll fall just shy. So sometimes it'll exceed that. But that's, I just wanted to point that out, that we have uh, nearly met the measured uh, move here for that uh, flag pattern. I might have actually had that flag pull a little bit too long. So there it is. Yeah, either way, it comes right up to the top of the gap there. All right, let's look at QQQ. We'll, then we'll look at the futures and we'll we'll wrap this up. This is a QQQ 60-minute chart. You can see the Qs, as I mentioned. This is the all-time high in the Qs. Uh, if you recall, QQQ went on after the January correction down into the February lows. Um, QQQ went on to make a new high, which was a divergent high in the daily chart. So there it is. Uh, just try to quantify it for you. We're only at this point now about 3.2% away from that. However, again, we are very, very overbought. Uh, I'm going to look at the futures chart in a second because the futures will give us a different story. But here you can see we burn through these potential divergences. However, uh, that's just one thing. We do have uh, very overbought conditions. And again, it's, you know, technical analysis is all about looking at past you know, past patterns and developments. And, and you can see that in, in every instance when we were overbought, at least while we've been in this trading range, that has been that has marked a top where you can then trade, you know, put a short on. This one was more of a consolidation error. We did go back to sideways. There was some a drop off that overbought reading, but we went on, made a marginal new high above that, and then had a, a decent correction. So again, uh, trade it as you want. Uh, if we're if this market isn't going to new highs anytime soon, then that opens the door for a pretty decent move down. I could see us easily moving down. Let's just say this: my minimum target based on this wedge and everything else 
uh, you know, to be accurate, if I want to say minimum target. And again, we'll just have to see how things develop. If these wedges break down, how impulsive are they? Uh, 166.85. So again, if maybe if you're bullish, there's a little gap to backfill there, but I don't think that's enough to work off these overbought conditions. Possibly if we trade sideways, I'm referring to this little gap right here. So, uh, you know, minimum target, 166.85. Let's call this the pullback range. If you're looking to recycle back long, uh, 166.85 as that reaction high there and then maybe all the way down here to 164.54 uh, and uh, again that would be this is what I call my bullish scenario where we we consolidate come back to maybe the bottom of that level and then go on and if we we get much above that 170 80-ish level we're probably going to take out the high since we're so close but again you have to watch what S, the S&P 500 does because that's more representative of the entire stock market uh, so, uh, you know, like we said before, we saw the queues make new highs and this spy failed to. So there it is. And if, if this is just another uh, shorting op within this trading range and you want to look for a swing target, let's say you want to short here and uh, trail a stop down or just set your stop above your entry because I do believe it's an objective short entry. I think the upside at this point is minimal. I think at best we have maybe a little more upside and a sideways grind. Uh, I don't see a big risk. Anything's possible. We're heading into a weekend. You have to remember that too. Whatever you take home tonight, you have two nights of over, two days of overnight risk. But um, a pullback target, you know, uh, let's say for the bearish scenario, uh, if that pans out, my minimum target would be that 164.54 level right there. And I could easily see a move down here to 160.33, possibly more. Um, Again, we'll just have to see the nature of any pullback if it starts, how impulsive it is. I'll have to take a look at the top components of QQQ again. And let's jump to the futures charts, and then we'll wrap this up. All right, let's start with NQ or, well, we have ES. All right, I clicked on ES. We'll, we'll get there first. <clears throat> Here's that well-defined, see the ES charts I like because they tell you a little bit different story. You can see, you know, well-defined uh, trend line, uptrend line right here. A lot of reactions, one, two, three, four, five. You can tighten this trend line up a little bit like that if you want. And we're, we're towards the top of that now, just above this recent reaction high. But you can see there's a resistance line right here. This is the, the a lot of reactions right here. 27 28 67 so we'll call that 27 29 for you es traders and so far um you know that's where the market seems to have stalled out what stands out to me is we just by a hair took out the divergences on the uh, rsi however we're extremely overbought i don't have my 70 level lines i should add those here there's the uh roughly actually actually a little high um you can see these are the overbought readings and so although the divergence was taken out, we're, we're at the most overbought level, just like SPY. Remember, this is these are the ES. They trade around the clock. But you can see this level is the most overbought we've been in months since back here. And that was followed by this, you know, this drop, which really didn't terminate until this point right here. So, again, the potential is there. Negative divergence in place on the uh, on the PPO. Um but we need to break this trend line. This is your this is your sell signal. So you can either short here at the highs with the stop not too far above or wait for a break or do both. Your partial position there, add on here. Um, and again, if you're bullish uh, and you want to buy a pullback, you can see a pretty decent support level there. 26.90, we'll call that 26.98 if we get it. Pullback on, on a yet. NQ, and this is my preferred trading proxy, you know, the Qs or NQE minis, either one, uh, you know, very, let's just focus on, you can see everything to the left. And again, I've gone over this chart a lot, so I won't repeat, you know, what's, what's happened, all these micro rips and dips, but you can see a nice, clean, well-defined trend line with a lot of reactions. One, two, three, four, now five reactions on that uptrend line. This is your divergence line right here that makes up a bearish rising wedge. Those divergences are confirmed. We now have the PPO, which is a momentum indicator, pointing lower. It's made a bearish cross. And the RSI also has negative divergence because it has made a lower low versus that previous low. So um, that's a textbook bearish rising wedge pattern. Uh, we're, we're sitting right on it. And as I said in the trading room today, you know, either these things break soon, uh, is in today or early Monday, uh, or they probably don't break at all, or at least... You know, that doesn't mean we can't go lower, but what happens is you're getting close to the apex of the wedge. You know, apex of a wedge is where two, where the two lines come together. 
and there's a sweet spot, usually anywhere, it depends, 65, 70%, sometimes up to 80% towards the apex of the wedge. In other words, this is the uh, sweet spot of the wedge, where if it's going to break down, that's usually where you see it break down. And it's not to say it can't do anything else. There's a lot of, there's always a ton of possibilities in the market. Sometimes you get a wedge overshoot, uh, which means a quick pop above the wedge, and that's followed by a swift reversal back down in and below with very little reactions along the way. So that's that. And again, this is what I'm looking at. And, you know, going off where we've been uh, is just this, you know, uh, pattern of rips and dips. Uh, this looks like the next objective shorting up for a, a pull, at least a pullback trade. And I've given you some, you can see all the targets here. And again, uh, you know, if, if we start to get an impulsive breakdown, we probably won't have a really good idea into where things are going until Monday. Uh, until we see what happens Monday. At that point, um, if we do break down, I'll give some extended targets. And if we happen to power through these divergences and move on higher, then we'll look at some upside. You know, you don't really have resistance levels when you take out new highs in the market or any stocks. And then we have to look at Fibonacci projections. We can take the pattern measurement of this large trading range and et cetera, et cetera, and, and, and try to see how far the market might go to the upside. But right now, uh, I, I favor this, uh, clearly favor some downside here. And again, at best, at best, over the next couple of days, some sideways consolidation. So that's, therefore, I think it's objective, you know, to add a short position here with a stop somewhat above, somewhat is all depends on how much you're targeting, 1%, 2%. Uh, you know, half percent if you're looking for a quick day trade pullback. But uh, that's that, and I'll keep you updated if anything changes. This has been Randy Finney with the Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.